Hi, everyone, and here we are celebrating what people love to do creatively. I'm Rod Jones. And I'm Ingy Jones. Welcome to the Thought Row Podcast. We invite you to subscribe wherever you listen, and we are available virtually anywhere you listen to podcasts. No matter what you do creatively, this podcast is for you. Ingy, what are we discussing today? Well, today we're going to be speaking with three people from a company called All Fashion by Nature. And our guests will be Dominique Nancy, Lisa Lawrence, and Darren Sleep. I have to admit, this is a first for us, a <laughs> bit of a challenge coordinating the fact that we have three guests, yep. plus NG and myself. And to make it even more interesting, these people are located in three different countries. But I know this is going to be a great show. Right. In three different time zones, too. Oh, yeah. So time zones. It was a bit of a coordination feat on our part. So good job, us, I guess. So, okay. This week, we have a quote that really kind of goes with our theme, which is collaboration. So our quote this week is a really good one. And here it goes. Alone, we can do so little. Together, we can do so much. And that is by Helen Keller. That does work with our uh, Yeah, doesn't it? It really today. goes with, yeah. our, with our theme. You know, we've, we've used Helen Keller quotes before. Yeah, we have. And I personally never realized that she said so many brilliant things. Although I'm not surprised because she was brilliant in she every respect. Brilliant. And most of what I know about her, I've read a little bit about her. And I certainly saw the movie. I think everybody has well, seen yeah. the movie about her life. So good. Which was excellent. But as we've learned or explored some of her quotes and as we adopted them into our podcasts, I gained even more respect for her because these are brilliant. I mean, her, her quotes have just been excellent. So true. And, you know, I in the past, I have not really ran across Helen Keller quotes, but as we look for quotes for the show, so we can have something that goes with our theme and, you know, and kind of is resonating with um, what we're saying. And it's amazing how profound her quotes really are. And for someone who was so challenged physically on every aspect of being challenged. It's amazing how brilliant she was and was able to share it with so many people. And I'm going to add just one more thing. Mm -hmm. They have really helped our discussions in mm -hmm. our shows. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. They have. And we have a new segment for you guys this week and it is called Rod's Motivational Moment. And so Rod, what do you have for us today? I have never complain and never explain. Oh. And when I say never complain, nobody likes people that complain all the time. I no. mean, they, they, if you want to lose friends real quickly, <laughs> start complaining about something. And then the part about never explain, if you make a mistake or you offend somebody, you should absolutely apologize, but don't go into a long explanation of why you said it or why you did it, because what that does is it invites further discussion, and those discussions more often than not take uh, twists and turns and directions that you may not want them to go. So my thought here is you should never complain because mm -hmm. nobody wants to hear it. Right. And the second thing is if you do offend somebody, by all means, you have to apologize. That's your duty to apologize if you hurt somebody's feelings. Mm -hmm. uh, but when you start explaining, you're setting yourself up for more confrontation. So that's it. Never complain and never explain. Okay. I couldn't agree with you more, Rod. I'm thinking that this new segment is going to be a very good addition. I hope so. I'm, I'm excited about it. So we're going to talk about collaboration today. Uh, it's great for some people, but really not so much for others. It depends a lot on what people are doing. In a creative arena, mm -hmm. it can be problematic. When it comes to putting together a team, you yeah. know, like in a company or a corporation or a small business, when you get everybody together and you kick around a new idea or a concept, then collaboration works great because somebody at that table 
is mm-hmm. going to say something and somebody else will go, oh, yeah, that's great. And then they're going to add to it and somebody's going to add more to it. And then all of a sudden you're coming out with some really brilliant ideas. And I think everybody that's had that opportunity to experience that has walked away from those meetings and they're patting each other on the back and they go, oh, God, you know, that was a super idea you came up with. And mm-hmm. it just goes on and on. Well, I also think about collaboration, especially in the corporate environment where everyone is bringing what their talent is to the game and they can contribute to it and make a success of it. And when you have everyone pulling on the rope in the same direction, it's really great because then you really get some synergy going and some positive vibes. Yeah, they make it from its unique perspective as well how I see it. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you were going to talk well, some about... Like, some like collaborations, others prefer to create in a solitary environment. Oh, yeah, that's true. But yeah, not everyone likes collaboration, that's for sure. I mean, they, they like to maybe do things alone and need time to think. Like maybe a writer writing a novel is not going to collaborate with someone too often, I don't think. Well, for you and I, I mean, when we paint, we mm-hmm. don't collaborate no, we don't. We don't. I think it's because we just, we paint differently and we just need to, like you've said in the past, get in the zone where you can just really delve deep inside of you to let some artistic flow come out of you. Well, I think for me personally, my best ideas come when I'm in a solitary environment. Mm-hmm. I, I can think. And after a period of thinking, sometimes a really brilliant idea comes out of it. Mm -hmm. And then when it comes to art, I'll adopt it. Or when it comes to writing one of my articles, I'll adopt those thoughts and ideas, but they're not always brilliant. But after a certain period of time, I really like what happens. What do you think about collaborating? Well, I, I have a bit of a problem with collaborating when artistically, because I think you need to lose yourself in your art in order to be able to really tap into that creative flow. And sometimes it's difficult to do that when you have other people around, it's distracting, you want to talk. I don't know, I want to have fun and talk. So being the the girl in class that always talks too much, for me, that doesn't work because I really have to concentrate and just go into another dimension in myself that I don't readily draw upon, you know, in everyday life. I think our collaborating together We certainly collaborate together when we create these podcasts. Mm -hmm. You know, we write together, come up with our thoughts and ideas or or schedule shows, et cetera, together. Mm -hmm. When it comes to painting, after you complete a painting or after I complete a painting, then we obviously run to each other and say, hey, come and look what I did. You You know, what do you think? (laughs) And I value your input. I very rarely make changes. Sometimes you'll tell me, hey, if you add one more thing, you're going to junk it up. Yeah, and invariably, that's usually the thing I say to you. Yes, and invariably, Stop. I add one more thing and I junk it up. Yeah. Uh, but that's my style, <laughs> junking it up. And there it is. <laughs> there it is. I like it when I look at your work. Your work is generally pretty polished by the time I see it. But I do make comments, usually more about your borders than anything else, just to yeah. support the composition. Yeah. I, and I, and I appreciate that because sometimes I'm so focused on some of the action in the middle of the canvas that it, the borders get kind of undone. And, and I guess that's a style, but honestly, I feel like your input on that is like, okay, you need to tone down those borders. They're just, they're, they're a little too loud. Well, it's meant with kindness and it's friendly and you and I are, we've been doing it long enough to where we understand where the other person is coming from and right. accept it and and you've come yeah, up with some real, it. yeah, I and I welcome, welcome it. it too because you actually have given me some pretty good ideas mm-hmm. that I was not afraid to take. Well, you know what though, I think that if you are very on the same wavelength and are saying with love and kindness, it's one thing. But sometimes, if you know, well-meaning person in your family or a friend or something, it comes across and is, you know, being the art critic that you really didn't want to have critique your art and is a little brutal, that can be hurtful. That was the word I was going to use. They could be brutal. Brutal. And they really don't understand, but they know they don't like it or they just want to voice their opinion and maybe take out frustrations. Who knows? I'll tell you where there's collaboration in art. Where is that? When you look at those big giant canvases in the Louvre, painting is always by some particular artist, but those giant paintings were painted by 
teams of artists. They right. give the apprentices one little corner and say, hey, you know, paint all the backgrounds around mm-hmm. this figure. And then they, the main artist would put all of the polish to it or lay out the composition or maybe even do the drawing initially mm-hmm. in those little, what are they called, cartoons, the little drawings. Cartoons, yeah. yeah, they would do the little drawings and then they would composite the whole thing. But no one artist could ever build one of those in a lifetime. They, those things are mammoth. Right. And that is collaboration. That is collaboration, but kind of art direction in my book too. Yeah. Because you lay it out and then you say, okay, all you people, please fill this in. It's more of art direction at that point. But, you know, it is art and it's gorgeous. Well, what about in, on a movie set? I've been on movie sets before yeah, and everybody's too. pulling together. Yeah. And then I've had a suggestion for a director and I very carefully walk up to him and I kind of whisper in his ear mm-hmm. so nobody else can hear. Mm-hmm. And then he has the option of, of taking that idea yeah. and incorporating it or not. And if you're going to give somebody a suggestion and there's a lot of people around, I always think it's best to do it just one-on-one and kind of quietly it and is. then, and then not. Because sometimes it makes people feel bad, especially if your idea is light years ahead of what they were thinking. Right. It's best just to couch that and be somewhat quiet about it. True. And then also with a director on a movie set, they want the whole crew to be focused on their direction. And if it starts being a group direction, then the the film really loses the essence and the feel of what they want to project and the story they want to tell and how they want to tell it and the, the whole vibe of it. So I can see being annoyed with a group project at that point and somebody needs to come to them and tell them, you know, what, what they're thinking so they can decide what, what works for the film. Yes. Whoever's in charge is the one who makes the ultimate decision. Right. right. I have an interesting story about Whistler. Now this was told to me, I can't a hundred percent verify it, but I do believe it's true because the person that told me this several years ago or shared the story with me Uh several years ago seemed to be pretty knowledgeable about Whistler. Yeah. But apparently Whistler had a multi-story studio. He had several floors and it was before elevators apparently. And he had to go up and down stairs and he had a group of artists on each floor working on paintings Mm -hmm. and he would go up and down to each one of those rooms and he would go in and he would tell his artists what they should be doing or if he wanted changes, they would change it. And then at the end of the day, he would go run up and down those stairs and he would sign each of the paintings as if it were a hundred percent his own. Now, is it true or not? I don't know, but it's just a fun story. It's a fun story, but it also reminds me of Andy Warhol with his factory where he had people doing kind of the same thing really. And he was putting his, Andy Warhol name on it. And so you have kind of a factory situation there, really. But a collaboration. Still, everybody was very, I think, happy to be there and happy to be experiencing the excitement and the the creativity that was going on. So I guess it's kind of a feeding of each other on that one. Yeah. And for me personally, I find that I do my best uh, creative thinking alone. I mentioned this before. Mm-hmm. And what about you? I mean, I I kind of know when you're thinking creatively. Yeah. I leave you alone. Yeah, um, same here. You know, you seem to... I think you need to do that when you see your significant other or not. You know, they need some space to, to think and get in the zone for themselves. Yeah, getting in that space. And and if, you, if your mate or your partner or whoever you're doing a creative project with, sometimes you need to cut them a little bit of slack back off because you never know what's going to percolate out of them. It could be something really quite brilliant. So true. And then support it. Yeah. And that way they'll be a happy person (laughs) because they'll get to express their creativity and um, really explore it. So, okay. I think that we need to move on to our interview and then we'll get the thoughts from our three people that we're going to have who collaborate together across different continents and they bring out the best in one another on their project that's called All Fashioned by Nature. Hi, Dominique, Darren, and Lisa. Welcome to the Thought Row podcast. Both Angie and I have been really looking forward to chatting with you guys. Yes. Hi, everyone. So good to have you with us today. I'm with Rod. I've been looking forward to talking to people that collaborate creatively. Hello. Hello. 
Hi. Hello. Hi, guys. There's and a, hello from Michigan. Hey, hello from California. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for having us. Oh, yes. It's good to have you guys here. So we have all three of you online, which yes. is kind of exciting. It's exciting for us. This will be the first time we've managed to pull off a uh, conversation with more than three people. Right, exactly. So this is going to be interesting. Yes, and we're so excited to talk to you about your creative collaboration and your interesting business model, which is all fashion by nature. But before we begin, we'd like to ask you at the start of the show um, what you had for breakfast. Let's start with Dominique. Oh, that's an easy one for me. I'm always having the same thing for breakfast. Uh -huh. So, so <laughs> I, had, I had a cup of tea, whole gray, half a grapefruit, and a bowl of oatmeal with blueberries. How healthy. Oh, that's very healthy. Good for you. Now, how about Lisa? What did you have for breakfast, Lisa? I always have the same thing. I'm kind of boring that way, I guess. Um, cottage cheese and grapes. Oh, that sounds really good. These people are very healthy. Yeah, you guys are so healthy. And how about Darren now? I'm interested. Toast and marmalade. I only get bread at weekends, so that's my weekend treat. And um, three mugs of coffee. Well, you and me both. We I do three mugs of coffee in the morning, too. So cheers to you on that one. I drink tea, but I could go for that marmalade. That sounds <laughs> yeah, that delicious. Yeah, that sounds good. That sounds good. So I know everybody's going to want to know. I know uh, Angie and I want to know. Yeah. Who is the brainchild that came up with the concept All Fashioned by Nature, which is an online business, by the way? Uh, let's start with Dominique. Well, All Fashioned by Nature didn't initially start as a business. It's our collaborat collaborative uh, project called When Fashion and Nature Collide, mm -hmm. which we started in uh, 2018 on WordPress, and that project inspired us to create some of our designs. And oh. after a year or so, the three of us realized that people seem to have an interest for the designs. So Lisa put up together her first artist shop on Treadless, and then uh, I started to style the T-shirt, the top bags, and to show them on my um, IG account. Mm -hmm. And, well, so to answer your question, it's our creative approach that brought the brand to life. Mm -hmm. So you all basically contributed and it just evolved from there, I guess. Exactly. See, that's really nice. And it's really interesting that you started out on WordPress not even really selling. So it kind of evolved to a selling atmosphere for you guys. Yeah, is that correct? Exactly. Maybe Lisa wants to talk or Darren wants to add to this. Yeah, sure. Lisa, yeah. what do you have to say? Yeah, Lisa. Yeah, it kind of just organically formed for the three of us. And after what we did on our blogs, it just developed and we started creating and we had so much fun doing it. Well, we can tell because the designs have a very warm feel to them. And it's like, it's not just about selling. It's more about the the vibe that you're trying to have people see and and I, I really personally like that you started out as a blog and then progressed into selling because it was not an intent to oh we're going to make a sale it was more of we like what we're doing we love what we're doing absolutely not actually and may I, if i can add yes this project was just for the three of us to have fun and to bring something else into our lives yeah, And um, we just, it's actually some of our followers that suggested that maybe we should start a, a shop. But we waited, we took our time. We waited two years, I, a year and a half yeah. before setting up the shop. And we waited another year before changing, before having an Instagram account. So, oh, really? Wow. Wow. What about you, Darren? Do you have a thought on this? I don't really. I mean, the, the, the other two have covered that pretty well. Okay. It's, um, yeah, I'd like to emphasize, as they said, it very much evolved organically. Um, nobody set out with this intention in mind, and it was just, it was a friendship thing. Oh, good. It still is. Oh, that's that's really good. That's the that's best excellent. way to start out, really. Well, I know Angie has a question yeah, for you. Yeah, I do. We wanted to. We know each one of you are in 
different countries, one's in Canada, one's in England and the U.S. How did you meet or come together? And I think we're going to start with Darren on this one. Four or five years ago, we all started blogs on WordPress. In my case, I just qualified from a botanical art course, but I wasn't really connected with any other creative people. So I started through my blog connecting with other creatives, if you like. Amongst us was a group of people in the States, which included Lisa and a couple of other friends that we have. Uh And I've been connected connected with with Lisa for a while. And then as part of my professional life, I was investigating the effects of pesticides on bees. And one lunchtime at work, I was on WordPress and I thought I'll have a look and see if anyone's blogged on that topic and I came across a post by Dominic Oh, mm. and her bio read that she was a scientific journalist and fashion blogger and I thought that's a fascinating combination Yeah. so I, I left a comment to which Dominic replied and we've been talking ever since and then through our blogs and mutual contacts we formed this little group wow. well it looks like you guys came together uh you developed a really good organization between the three of you yes um my question for you is uh all of you seem to have uh an interest in nature when did you first discover this passion and let's start with lisa it's always been in me, I think. My grandparents had a 180-acre farm in northern Michigan, and my parents and grandparents have always gardened. So I think as I transitioned into adulthood, it just organically, it became a part of wow. me. Wow, that must have been so much fun living on a farm like that. Oh, we used to visit a lot, and it was a lot of fun. Gosh, how, how neat is that? It sounds like idyllic. And what about you, Darren? Amongst my few positive memories of childhood were spending my summer holidays with my grandparents 50 miles up the coast from where we lived. My grandfather was a retired mm-hmm. iron worker and they lived right on the coast. The former iron mines had been turned into nature reserves. Oh. And, um, oh, nice. We would spend long, early summer mornings on walking through the nature and to watching the wildlife. And he was a very keen gardener as well, so he introduced me to my love of gardening. Oh, how excellent. oh, that's so nice. He can pass that on to you like that. And Dominique? I grew up in an historical village called saint Eustache. It's about 20 miles, not 20 miles, 20 minutes drive from uh, Montreal. And... I was, well, in my childhood, I was always playing outside with my brother and friends. The house we grew up was near a river, and it would be our playground for all kind of outdoor activities. Mm -hmm. Plus, my father also used to take us every year to the forest to pick wild garlic. That was something that we do every year. And I remember the feeling like, feeling like a treasure hunter, being aware of everything that was around me. Right. So I know that nowadays I feel this similar feeling when I go for my daily walk in cemetery nearby my house. It it just reminds me how little material and consumptions I need to enjoy my life. Wow. How cool is that? That leads me to my next question. How does where you live currently affect your view on nature's beauty. And we can start with Lisa on this. Because I live in the forest with a small lake, I share a yard with all nature's critters. And they're all brilliant engineers as we watch them. And the fact that um, we have four seasons and the color's amazing. And I have to be mindful when I step out my front door sometimes to to Mm kind of peek and look to see what's out there. Because I could walk up on a fox or, you know, a a deer or anything like that. So I'm always kind of mindful of that. Oh, that's so wonderful that you have that access to nature right there with with the foxes and deers and things like that. That that really puts things into perspective of the beauty that's just available in nature every day. And what about you, Darren, where you live? What what do you see out your window? I live 
on the hillside overlooking Morecambe Bay on England's west coast. I'm about 30 minutes drive from the English Lake District. Um, so I have the ocean and the mountains very close by. Oh, how beautiful. Um, Sounds gorgeous. It is. My bedroom window looks west into the sunset and I can see across the Irish Sea to the Isle of Man or south as far as I can see Blackpool Tower, for example. So it, it's a great vista. Completely gorgeous. Yeah, yeah our listeners are going to have to get out a, a map yeah, and so Google they can it see. so they can see what you're seeing. And then about a mile or two away, there's Wharton Crack Nature Reserve, which I spend a lot of time on. Up until recently, we we lived on Waldy Island, which is an island on the Cumbrian coast, and mm-hmm. that has nature reserves at both ends. So I've been very lucky, really. It sounds like it. Do you want to trade? Gorgeous. Do you want to trade locations? Do you want to <laughs> live where we are? We'll live yeah. where you are for a year. Yeah, we'll trade. I, I, I could live with the California weather. I have to say, <laughs> uh, this part of England is notoriously wet. Yeah, well, where we live, it snows, so we get four seasons. So yeah, we're up in the mountains. You may not be. What about you, Dominique? Well, as you know, as Canada, you know Canada, Canada can be can be very cool sometimes, but the landscape is wonderful. Uh, Twelve months a year. To me, it's all about the colors, the shape, the scent, and the texture of things. Mm-hmm. The light that reflects on the snow, the blue sky. We do have very bright blue sky over here, and the amazing views that we get during fall truly dazzle the senses. Oh, I bet. But. I live in the city right now, so I have city garden, a small city garden. Mm-hmm. But thankfully, this garden, my house, is very close from the Mont Royal. Uh-huh. So I have all kinds of critters just coming and visiting me in my garden. Uh, lots of birds, even red fox sometimes. <laughs> oh, nice. so nice. And raccoons. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> They always seem to be around for some reason. Yeah, they like very much my uh, neighbor's garbage. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> yes. Uh, I, I saw my first raccoon when I visited Dominique last time. She took me to the top of Mont Royal and there was a, all the tourists were looking at the vista over the city. And she was very amused that I was so excited at seeing the, um, the raccoon that was picking up the waste that people had dropped over the veranda. <laughs> the night bandits, we call them. Yes. So each one of you are very, very talented in your own right. Tell us what you do creatively when you're not placing all of your creative energy into your collaborative project. How about we start with Darren? I do a lot of drawing projects for my for my own use. Um, I just finished some commissioned work drawing chili peppers for labels for a chili sauce company. Um, oh, nice. I've done a couple of pet portraits recently. I do a lot of photography. I play guitar very badly. That's, that pretty much sums, sums it up. Uh-huh, very good. Uh, what about you, Lisa? I do commission graphics for folks, other bloggers and customers, but I really like to restore old images digitally and with paint. And I also love to create new papers using old images and my own drawings, especially like flowers and scientific images. Mm -hmm. That sounds really gorgeous. That sounds gorgeous. Beautiful. And Dominique, what do you do creatively? I know you have a blog. Yes. Well, the blog right now, I'm not working on it. Mm -hmm. I'm focus my energy on uh, art project, mm-hmm. but I do photography and I write. I wrote a lot of children's stories, uh, short stories, blog posts through the years. Over the past year, though, I don't know, I had the need to express my creativity more manually, and I really don't know where it comes from, but I started to create my own handcraft uh, vase made with recycled cotton rope Mm -hmm. Mm, that's interesting oh i'm i'm telling you apart from my daily walk making these vases is my way to really connect to the the present moment well Mm. it's very tactile too it is it really is Mm. yes okay and then um what specific talent or talents do each one of you bring to project um we can start with dominique on this one well because we are a small business each of us, I mean, we're wearing many hats at the moment. Right. Personally, for the design, I bring creative ideas to the table. Mm-hmm. 
Sometimes these are presented in the form of doodles or slogans. Lisa and Darren brings, bring them uh, to life. Nice. Yeah, my brain works like a popcorn machine. <laughs> That's what my... <laughs> and it's very, very nice to have Darren and Lisa, you know, bring them to life, make this possible because mm -hmm. a design, an idea, actually, it has no value if it doesn't materialize. So with these two, I'm able to make them uh, materialize. I also take care of the aesthetic and marketing and content of our social media. And we're going to talk about the social media in a little bit. So let's hear what Darren's talent is that he brings. Interpreting Dominic's ideas, and sometimes, sometimes they're only a word or two, and I will put my own spin on them. Um, I also have a strange, very dry British sense of humour, which informs quite a lot of the things that I do for the project. I do a lot of photography. I do use my knowledge of plants from my mm -hmm. gardening experience, as well as bringing Dominic's ideas to life. I sometimes have flashes of inspiration and do things which may work for the project and may not work for the project. If, if they don't work for the project, they're put them to one side. It's a collaborative effort. Yeah. And Lisa, what do you bring to the table? Some of the creation, the product design, some graphic work and typography. And I manage our Threadless shop and templates for that. Oh, okay, okay cool. great. I know everybody is going to want to know this because of the way you guys work. So how do you guys connect when it's time to discuss each of your creative projects? I mean, how do you, how do you connect? You're all over the place as far as logistically where you're <laughs> yeah. located. So how do you guys connect? Uh, how about start with Dominic? We use email, direct messages, Dropbox, which has been a lifesaver for us. We also have weekly chat on Skype. And Planoly also has been very helpful because it allows me, among other things, to organize our social media posts. Let's not forget that technology is a tool. The fundamental requirement for collaboration is communication. Technology helps us exchange ideas and communicate in a collaborative way, anywhere, at any time. Well, almost at any time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Considering the different time zones. <laughs> right, you have to calculate what time zone it is for the, the rest of the crew. So, you got a question, Angie? Yeah, I do. When the three of you are discussing a new project or product, what exemplifies your creative mission and how does that conversation usually go? Yeah, let's start with Lisa. Oh, well, a concept is developed and then we kind of break it down from there to the what colors we use, what kind of balance we're looking for in that design, mm -hmm. what our role is as an individual and to contribute to that design. The, the cool thing about our projects is we touch, each one of us touch our designs in some form or another. So we all three of us have really hands on. That's really nice. You all have input and also your your take on what kind of needs to be there. So that's cool. You know, I know when people collaborate with each other creatively, it seems to create a special kind of energy or bond between you guys. Do you feel a special energy when you guys collaborate together? Let's hear from Lisa. Yeah, we do have a special bond. And I got to say, Dominic and Darren are like my family. I mean, they might live far away, but creatively, they're an extension of myself. And I can say a few words and they know exactly where I'm going with it. See, that's really nice when you're all on the same wavelength like that when you're creating. Yeah, Dominique, do you have a thought on that? Yeah. Well, I feel exactly the same. Over the past three years, I think I have talked more to Lisa and Darren than my own Abby. So <laughs> seriously, I do consider them as part of my family. And you, Darren? Well, I never had two. I never had sisters until this project started. Uh -huh. I feel like Aww. I do now. See, that's so nice. Um, and it does give you a lot of creative energy as well, because you know you feel like if you're working something, if you're working on something that for other people or with other people's support it gives you far more incentive to actually sit down and get on with the work rather than procrastinating. 
That's so true. And then that way it also gives you a, a less of an insecure feeling because you feel like you have someone there having your back Absolutely. and telling you if it's not cool or if it's really cool, then you, you get some feedback, which is kind of nice yeah. in this day and age because I think we all work kind of individually. And when you can have like a cadre of friendship and working together like that, it's, it's so important. And then I would like to know, what advice would you give to other creative people that want to collaborate with others, especially if they're in different parts of the world in different time zones like you guys? And let's start with Dominique on this one. Oh, I would suggest to learn and collaborate with people that add value to your work. Working in different parts of the world can be difficult sometimes, but with technology nowadays, it is less of a problem. Right. I would add that. It is also crucial to truly communicate and respect each other. Mm, okay. And then um, let's ask Lisa about this. Yeah, I would just say use technology and find like, like-minded others that are like, think like you mm-hmm. and have respect for each other. I think that's the key. Like it. And then um, Darren, any thoughts on I'd this? I'd like to uh, kind of take what Lisa just said and... Uh, add a little bit to it and say that, you know, if you're a creative person and you aren't surrounded by creative people in your real life, then reach out on social media, connect with other people that you think are like-minded because there's a tribe out there for everybody. You don't need to feel isolated. Oh, that's a great that's answer. That's very good advice. That's very good. Well, you know, we've you guys have actually covered my next question, but maybe you can break it down into one or three words. So tell us what has been your most gratifying experience in your collaboration. And let's start with Lisa. I would say friendship is number one mm-hmm. and a view from another's perspective. Mm-hmm. Oh, very good. I like it. Dominique? Definitely friendship. This is what brought, really brought us together and amplified just our, our creativity. Okay, Darren? Definitely friendship as well. In my case, possibly for the first time in my life, I feel that something I was missing inside has been healed. Oh, that's, that's very nice. That's such a nice thing yeah. when, you, when you can have your work life be a healing process instead of one that's depleting. Cause I know for many people out there, work equals stress and not a pleasant environment. So this is really cool because you guys are not only creating, but it's also nurturing you on your soul level and emotionally. Yeah. You've managed, you've managed to elevate each other uh, yeah. creatively and apparently spiritually. That's kind of cool. That is cool. I agree with that. Yeah. So um, where do you guys see your business model and collaborative efforts in the next five years? And I'm going to start with Darren on this one. In an ideal world, I would like to see that this is becomes our full time occupation. Yeah. And that we aren't trying to squeeze it in around other responsibilities and day jobs. That sounds like a good plan. <laughs> yeah. What about you, Lisa? Yeah. What would be your goal here? I hope we're going to be in everybody's wardrobe in five years (laughs) worldwide. (laughs) That would be great. Good for you. That would be great. (laughs) And Dominique? Yeah. Well, just like Lisa said, I really see yourself known for a successful team who offers fun and uh, inspiring design that speaks to nature lovers. Oh, good. Mm, Okay. This next question is going to be kind of a two-parter. I'm going to ask the first part of it. And then Angie's got a couple comments to go along with this, but I know everybody's going to want to know because well, actually we met through social media. Yeah. So has your social media contributed to your success? And let's start with Dominique. Oh, yes. For a starter, uh, none of us would probably have met if it wasn't for social media. And considering our business model, it is an online online shop, so social media is key for us to to reach our tribe. And then I, this is a personal question because I know people out there, you know, they're maybe struggling with social media and they're not really sure what to do. Do you feel that it's really effective in your brand? And I know you guys met through, you know, social aspects of being online, but what do you think about as a business? Is it 
easy? Is it hard? Or do you have one tip that you can give where maybe someone will go, okay, that really resonates with me too, and I can, I can kind of make a success of it? Well, the three of us are pretty much introvert. So yeah. <laughs> social media doesn't come necessarily naturally for us. Right. And we've, we've been learning a lot. I, to come back to one of your question of where we see each other, uh, where we see our brand in five years. Yeah. I hope we'll keep on learning. And, uh, but also I hope that before 2026, Six will have at least two other members on our team. So one that is an expert on social media would be a great asset. Right. Nowadays, we need to be on social media if you are a brand like us. And uh, mm. so we are pushing the frontier, learning. I'm taking all the course this there is. Right. I'm putting fear aside because, let's face it, 99% of the fears never come true. So yeah, very true. What we fear. Very true. Let me pop into this next question because you're kind of getting into this right. a little bit. Has collaborating with each other on this project impacted your own creative drive, your own personal drive? And let's start with Darren. Very much so. It's not just drive either. I mean, I mentioned earlier that you have a, it encourages you not to procrastinate and actually get on with things. But in my case, it's been massively beneficial with regards pushing me out of my comfort zone too creatively i'm doing things that i'm I'm drawing subjects and doing things and using techniques that i wasn't doing before and what about you lisa yeah these two really fuel my creativity and they push me out of my comfort zone which i like to, to snuggle up in my comfort zone and stay there so getting that push from these two is is just amazing see that's really good And on this call, we're all creative people and creative people can have a little bit of an ego at times. How do you guys manage to mutually agree on one of the concepts that you come up with? And we can start with Dominique on this. We try on creating the best designs as possible. So we easily let go of our ego and focus on that objective. Nice. Sometimes if a design isn't exactly what we envision, I may ask if we can try something else. For example, for the smile design, we wanted the letters to have the brand color palette and we wanted to have some movement in the letters. So Mm -hmm. Lisa tried different fonts. But at the end, we all decide which design is better for our brand and democracy wins. Okay, great. And then has working with your creative partners contributed to your own personal growth and ambitions? And we can start with Lisa on this one. Oh, yeah. I think they, they've they taught me so much about myself mm-hmm. that I can creatively go on that expanded journey with them. Right. Perfect. And then how about Darren? Well, very much so. I was... Um introverted to the point of being socially extremely awkward but my confidence as a person has grown massively as a result of working with other people and particularly people who are so encouraging and accepting that's really wonderful to hear and then what about dominique same uh, both of them collaborating okay. with lisa and darren has been one of the best decisions of my life I mean, my brain is constantly doing the popcorn machine bit. <laughs> I love that yeah, analogy. Yeah, boy, everybody knows that one. So this is going to be a, a kind of a quick answered question, but what do each one of you want to be remembered by? And let's start with Darren. How do I want to be remembered? Yeah. Um, for kindness and humor, I think. Well, you're good at both of those, yeah, we think. You're, you definitely are perfect at those. What about Lisa? What do you what do you want to be most remembered by? I think my kindness and my love and respect for nature. Oh, I think that's great. wonderful and too. Dominic. Yeah. Hope to be remembered for my creativity and leadership, but most importantly, uh, for my presence and action that left a pleasant feeling and inspired others to pursue their passion and their dreams. You know, this the, the way you guys have been chatting and the way you talk with each other. It's obvious that you are a good creative triad, yes. oh, a, a yes. team, a cadre. There's a lot of words for it, but you 
you're all very sensitive and you obviously are creative. Mm -hmm. And the fact that you've managed to connect together in this world is kind of a cool thing. And I'm it's going to be nice to see how your business and your relationships, how they both grow. Right. And I love how you guys feed each other emotionally, spiritually, and creatively. That's um, such a rare thing and Thank you. so wonderful to hear. It amazes me. Okay. Now I'm going to ask you guys a question that I've asked other people. And it is, if you could sit on a park bench and chat with anyone from the past, who would it be? And I think that we're going to start with Lisa. Mine is Elizabeth Blackwell. She was the author of The Curious Herbal. Uh Um, Elizabeth, she drew the plants from life and engraved them, putting them on a copper plate with descriptive text. She had them printed out and hand colored. She published them weekly. And it was from 1736 to 1739 when she did that and she had them published into the two volumes as a book, and she worked as a midwife as well, which I find that extremely interesting. I just find her remarkable, and can you imagine the drive she had in that era and what she could do today with all of our technology? Oh, yeah. I can imagine you two chatting on the bench. I can imagine yes. that would be an interesting conversation <laughs> to its own. Yeah, we can really imagine it. It would be. What about you, Darren? <laughs> Well, interestingly enough, Dominique and I had a conversation about this some time ago, and we both chose the same person. Oh. So it's going to be a three-person bench, I'm afraid, and I'm going to hand over to Dominique to um, tell you about the person. It's a long bench, no problem. (laughs) Yeah, it's a big bench. (laughs) Oh, God, well, (laughs) yes, I would gladly sit on a bench for an hour with two bearded Englishmen. Even if that means listening to you both talking about earthworms. And <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so, yes, Darwin, Darwin is oh, definitely okay. one of the most influential figures in human yes, uh, history. His concept was simple but powerful, and individuals best adapt to their environments are more likely to survive and reproduce. And it is one of the process that drives evolution and helps explain the diversity of life on Earth. And uh, I mean, I would gladly uh, sit on a bench and talk with them. Well, that would be extremely interesting also. Yeah, definitely. Maybe you all should get together all on a a picnic table and discuss the whole thing. Yeah, have a little picnic (laughs) and have a chat. This has been a most informative discussion on collaboration. You guys brought a lot to this conversation. I want to really thank you, Dominique, Darren, and Lisa. You all are obviously very special people. You're very talented. But I think what we've learned, our big takeaway from this conversation is not only your creative passion, but I really picked up the joy you, you three share in how you relate to each other and your respect for each other. And the I think, love. And the love. And the love. Yeah, I think yeah. that is extremely admirable. So we really appreciate both Angie and I really appreciate yes. having this interview with you. Yes. I think, Angie, you're up. Yeah, and I wanted to let everyone know that's listening, if you want to know more about All Fashioned by Nature, we will have links in the show notes and also under the show guest tab on thoughtrowpodcast.com so everyone can listen All Fashioned by Nature website and learn more about it. And please connect with them on social media because it's truly beautiful to look at their products. Yeah, they're creative the people. You'll find you'll it'll be very interesting for it. you. So I guess it's bye for now. And we thank you guys for joining us today. And uh, we will talk okay. to you later. Thank you very much for having us. All righty. Yes, thanks. Thank was you. fun. Okay, bye. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye. I'm really glad you tuned in today. We hope you enjoyed the thoughts and ideas we shared with you. We post a new podcast every week, so remember to subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts so you don't miss an episode. So it's bye for now from my husband Rod and I, wishing everyone a great day.